Perfect. Uh, welcome, everyone, on the 10th session of Governance Education Session. So we have now uh, already finished nine sessions and uh, 10, I think that will be the best one so far, uh, will be with Justice. And Justice will walk us through uh, the new bankless uh, governance structure. He's uh, part of the GEC initiative, which uh, I believe uh, has started last season. And the goal of it is really uh, to do something better in governance, but more uh, Justice will tell us about. Justice, the floor is yours. Cool, thanks guys. I'm gonna try to act calm, cool, and collected even though when I got some Dow celebrities here on the line. So, <laughs> um, uh, thanks for the invitation to talk about this. This is really timely because the GSE commitment is kind of coming to an end and coming wrapped up and haven't yet put out a comprehensive statement on what was done and why it was done. Right. And so this is, this is a kind of a convenient way for me to package up those thoughts and present them in a, in a bite-sized consumable way. So a few things before we get started. Um, the, any views I express in this presentation are my views alone. There, they don't. There's no endorsement from any working groups or even the GSE group. The GSE group was five people with very diverse backgrounds and views, and we're not all sold on every single individual point or on the same page, right? But in general, I do believe that they would. Um, we are. There's no major points of contention here. Um, nextly, let me just point out that. Um, uh, you know, I love Bankless DAO. I love the Bankless DAO community. I love DAOs. And so please don't interpret any um, anything I say, uh, any of my opinions as critical, dismissive, jaded or anything. It's just, um, you know, when you, when you love something, you care how it's evolving and uh, how it changes and you want to see it uh, sustained and fruitful. Right. So that's my heart going into this. Um, this presentation, I'm just calling Bankless Dow 2.0. It's kind of a big statement, right? But I just want to tell a story in three parts. A little bit about me, just real quick. As my day job and professional background, I uh, used to be a developer, agile coach, solutions architect, which basically just system design, right? And so I spent the past 10 years helping IT teams deliver and like organizing IT programs. And then I was one of the five people elected as GSC uh, several months ago. And I'm a just a general DAO operator across the ecosystem. I go by zeroxjustice.eth in the cyberspace. Okay, so the three parts of this story I'm going to tell are the first is BDAO 1.0. This was massively impacted um, by the the famous frog monkey. Um, this I'm calling this our Genesis story. Uh, the second is what we're moving into, which is BDAO 1.5, and this is really the introduction of the Constitution and the Bankless DAO improvement proposal process, the BDIP process. And then three, where I think we need to be thinking aspirationally, and if we're going to survive as a community, is um, the transition from, I'm calling from a social DAO to platform DAO, or BDAO 2.0. So to kick it off, um, Bankless DAO 1.0, if you don't know about us, well, now you know. You can check us out at bankless.community. The new website's up, not perfect, but there's progress there. Um, and you can read about where we came from, where we're going. Um, we're the largest media DAO, massive reach, massive social capital, endless number of podcasts, newsletters, socials with the, with the mission of onboarding 1 billion people to crypto. So to hop right into it, in order to understand any DAO, I think you have to understand what what does it mean to be a member of the DAO? What's the onboarding process look like? Like how do you transition from not a member to a member? And then how is work done within it? And how how, how is work organized? And then how is that work funded? So um, effectively, and if you want to dive a little bit deeper in here, I can't go too detailed because limitation on time, but I'd encourage you to check out Diagramming DAOs number three from Sobel. G Cal put these uh, um, flows together. He is a true G. So basically, what's it mean to be a part of the DAO? Well, to be a part of the DAO is you come, you join a Discord server, you come in on a guest pass. When you want to actually be a member of the DAO, 
you need to validate in the server and hold at least 35,000 bank. Now, now you're a member, okay? Um, if you're moving and shaking and contributing real value, then you can be endorsed or recommended from another member of the DAO to be elevated to contributor status. This follows a process where like, they write the recommendation, it goes live on a public channel, people have opportunity to uh, criticize it or co-endorse it or co-sign it. And if they co-sign it, you become a contributor. And then on from there, um, further levels are defined by how much bank you hold. They call it the splash zone or mega whale or LP holder, whatever, right? So that's, that's the real basic version there. Um, working groups, how do you do stuff in the DAO? Well, um, pretty much on any of the levels, you can find your way into a guild or a project um, via the guild select. It's a role select in Discord. If you show it, and I'm once again, I'm speaking from my perspective, my experience. You show up a few times, you start to contribute, you will kind of organically be considered a part of that team. Um, the the access and how you're included in these is extremely open, um, and there are no formal agreements either on or off chain, either either at the you know wallet level or the legal level between these working groups and the the the, the DAO proper. So, you know, what's the whole community look like? A uh, few characteristics. The first is it is majestic. Uh, I have yet to see another DAO map that looks so expansive. Uh, this really doesn't even do it justice. If, if you were to zoom in on these, you could see there's hundreds of people. These, um, these groups are mapped to Discord roles. That's the mapping there. A few things to know, they're duplicative. That is, you could be a member in, you know, DAO Cartographer. You could also be a member in Bankless Academy, okay? So this is not a, a actual true definition here um, in, in that way, right? That every single one of these in, in individual nodes is a single person. It could be, or one person could be in many places. Also, there's no offboarding. Right now, the fidelity of this map is depend of this map is dependent upon DAO cartographers like whittling away through the night trying to keep it up to date. Um, so, if you came in and authenticated on one team, and then two months later it was just never updated, then you know you there would be a, a mismatch there. Okay. Um, as far as on chain, this is Mazari doing its best to map out our DAO structure, right? By saying, okay, well, what are the kind of the sub DAOs characterized by multi-sig. Um, you could see it's easier to trace to the guilds, but maybe the funded projects are a little harder to trace because a funded project could have been a funded project that was funded two seasons back, you know, six months, or um, maybe it's operational but not getting funded. So, so there's that. Also, uh, the guilds are to a great degree attendance based on membership. And so we try to calculate or determine you know what's the critical threshold of a person's activity in a guild to determine whether they're a part of that um typically a lot of projects and guilds do have three roles there's a there's a dri role like a directly responsible individual this person will be described as a guild coordinator or project champion and then often there are two roles in addition to that uh, either like a uh, onboarding and talent lead or education lead and talent lead right and uh, each of them have their own multi-sig and maybe even have their own dramatically different governance or true sub DAOs in that sense. So um, there's a little bit of the structure. What about governance? How is decision made at the top level? Well, it's it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It starts with the forum. A lot of this will be familiar with you to you based on a lot of other social DAOs. Um, there's time thresholds. Um, you write a forum proposal, you say, hey, I want 50,000 bank. It needs to be live for seven days on the forum. Um, the more money you ask for, the more number of people need to vote. And then in order, order for it to pass, you need a 70% um, pass on the forum. If it passes the forum, it goes to snapshot, needs to be on snapshot for seven days and needs 66% approval. Um, and like I said in the beginning here, there's no attempt to be critical here, but we're talking about governance and this is not a marketing call. This is a governance call, right? So I'm going to point out things where 
you know, there's a hole here or there, right? There is a there is a a bit of um a funny business here where we tend to batch up a lot of uh, funding decisions into our seasonal budget. And so all the guilds and a lot of projects and stuff will say, hey, here's what we want when it, we're closing in on the three month season, right? That iteration. And we'll ask for this. And all this stuff goes to snapshot all wrapped into one. Okay. And so if you kind of maybe want a little less scrupulosity um, and you and you can get all your ask in at the seasonal time point, it's a little easier to do so. If you miss that, then your request um, needs to go through grants committee, okay? And so grants committee has their own, uh, they have their own budget. And so you can kind of, um, you know, skip the snapshot, make sure you hit a uh, uh, quorum, you pass on the forum, and then grants committee, a, a group of individuals can say, okay, yeah, this is worthy. Let's let's give them this money, right? Um, the problem with the seasonal packaging is it, it results in a, what I'll call like a Santa Claus democracy. What that is, is like, I'm going to vote yes for this um, because I want the part in there that I'm asking for as well, right? And so just, just a heads up, and we'll kind of unpack this a little bit later on, on ways that we can improve this or change it. Um, as far as the narrative of Bankless DAO, in my uh, limited perspective and opinion, we're straight killing it. Um, our growth and mentions, I mean, I was at MCON and people, hey, where you come? Where are you from? Where are you from? And, you know, I hear people say like Medicartel and Raid Guild. And I'm like, wow. And they say, where are you from? I am coming from Bankless Style. They're like, oh, wow, really? There's a there's so much positivity and social cultural capital with Bankless Dow. It's it's awesome. Like we could we're in a position we could go straight to the stars uh, uh, where we're at in the Dow space. It's awesome. So the narrative is as strong as steel, but the narrative is only uh, its legs um, are only so long if the if the fundamental tokenomics are are not as strong underneath it. From a tokenomics standpoint, we're we're not in a great place. Again, my own opinion here, going from sixteen cents to hanging by one cent. Um, I'm going to argue based upon some other stuff. We'll look at this that we need to make some some major changes to the way we fund and and some mechanism. We need to introduce some mechanism to reduce circulating supply. Um, a, a lot of our uh, mental model is based on the idea that we would launch projects that made money and that money would go back to the to the top level DAO. That's not happening. And I wonder if uh, we're not pressing into our strengths as much as we could by trying to make it happen and instead let's let's focus on our strengths which are social in nature and 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 win so change our strategy a bit um so so a few things as far as our organization ops and funding issues a um, few things that just you'll notice there's kind of a conflation of operating units you see like projects some projects exist within guilds whereas other projects are outside of guilds so what happens is is you know you're funding a guild based upon like onboarding education and talent sourcing but most of the internal operations of that guild are building a pro a product where you know that's going to be judged differently than if the if everyone had to judge that product based upon its promise of return right um and there's also some are there's no distinction between our kind of promising ventures that we invest in and then our operational units and so there's not a difference between the cost and profit centers um and and all of this is funded uh directly from a treasury so like i said we kind of struggle to launch some projects and um and also there's a there's a real uh, flat compensation we don't have any i mean strictly speaking full-time employees um, at least judge based upon uh, American levels of compensation. And so you'll see where I'm going with this and, and kind of why we need to take a, take a, take a turn. So all of this takes us to Bankless DAO 1.5. Um, you know, before I hop into 1.5, does anybody have any questions or comments on what I've covered thus far? No, nope, you're all uh, yeah. good. I have one question. Yep. Uh, uh, do you think that decentralization in a way is uh, slowing you down? Like because you said that uh, it takes around seven days on forum uh, for to make a decision, right? 
so few decisions can be made um, faster if made like if guild leaders were supposed to do it uh, were having the capacity of doing it on their own so do you think decentralization in a way is slowing down how bankless functions i don't think that's a question that's uh first off thank you for the question but i don't think it's a question unique to bankless dao it's kind of like the ultimate uh, puzzle of all of dao's some people have said well it is slower but it's more resilient so who cares if we're slower right um and then others point out it's like well it's how you do de decentralization do you entrust working groups to make the decisions or how many decisions do you bubble all the way to the top right um and so could could we be faster um and still be decentralized i think so could we be as fast as a command and control structure maybe not because how how what does it matter how fast you are if you're making the wrong decisions because people too separated from the problem are calling the shots so it's it's a it's a bigger philosophical question than is specific to bdow but definitely a hot one yeah. any other questions comments I think also um, maybe if you could expand that the roles of governance within guilds, because I think that there's a misunderstanding that some people think that all of our decisions are made on forum, but not necessarily. I don't know if we're going to get to that, but just something to note too. <laughs> yeah, I would say um, that's why I mentioned at the at the top level, this top level, like how do these working units get funded? Once a working unit gets funded, the diversity as to how it works internally is very different. You could have a benevolent dictatorship. You really could. Or you could have, hey, we have our own quorum and how proposals go through that's even more complicated than the top level DAO governance. Um, the idea is, is, is what that group does or promises to do has it has the DAO deemed it like worthy to to get the funds, and then when it gets the funds, then it operates. So, so real different. But a, a guild doesn't need to take anything up all the way to snapshot to do stuff with its resources. Okay, so Bankless DAO 2.0. Um, this started with the GSC initiative. Frog Monkey wrote this GSC initiative at the beginning of the year, and then. Um, you know, changes in the market and also him exiting the DAO, kind of retiring from BDAO, um, caused this to have a massive delay before it was implemented for a whole season of three months, right? But the idea was there's a difference between working in the business versus on the business. And, um, you know, the bankless was, was operating on effectively the same operating system it was for over a year. Everyone was too busy to focus on it. This is a common... Uh, um, you know, problem, difficulty in DAOs. And so the idea is like, you need to, you need to pay people, set them apart and say, hey, just focus on this thing. So those, that's what was intended with the governance solution engineers. Five people elected to, to focus on this. Now, I can't go into detail of all the focus that was there, but the short version is, is it was, there was a big research initiative to say financially what is happening. And then what would be the hugest risk to be DAO and articulate like that risk exposure and kind of order that stuff. And um, that was the focus of some other GSEs. And then more so my focus was the introduction, uh, introduction of this uh, constitution. Now, um, this constitution and community handbook, the reason why this was introduced is because I, I felt that um, trying to make any big cross impact changes one it would be hard to get explicit agreement on the change before we had explicit agreement on how things currently worked our um governance I mean, I'm, I'm summarizing it now it's more complicated than what i'm summarizing now right they would be a whole hour just going through the constitution maybe but it was spread across the wiki google docs previous forum posts and they themselves were not all internally consistent and so it was like, we can't change something if we're not settled on where it currently is. So let's bring this all together, produce a canonical source of our OS, right? And then, and then we can introduce an improvement proposal process that looks a little bit similar to how we ask for money in changing it. And so now we have like a feedback loop for how change happens. Um, and uh, 
yeah so this was the this was the move to do the to to do the constitution right um a little on the improvement proposal process um th the thing is is you know, the, this is the first time we introduced a new template. Previously, our templates going through governance were always like, you're asking for money. Why? Where's it going to go? What's the impact on the brand? You know, who's the people involved and stuff like that. We needed a different template to describe how, what's the change we want to implement. A meta. Like, this is us making decisions, yes or no. What about the rules that say how we make those decisions? So this was the the meta. And uh, called it the B dip because really it's a it's a Dow version of a constitutional democracy. It's it's similar to the internet's uh, RFC request for comment, uh, Bitcoin's improvement proposal, EIPs. It's the same thing. So it's kind of like the layer zero Dow version of that. Um, the effect, the intended effect, is precise communication. So the B dip would be like, hey, you know, section two, paragraph three here's a diff on this is how it currently says this is what we're proposing here's a model of what we expect to happen and yada yada and then we'd have graduated uh requirements for um is this a major change then we need this kind of quorum is this a, a just a patch then we need this it was kind of like bringing all that together so the intended impact of this constitutional process was um First off, it's, it would be decentralized. No GSCs wouldn't come in and like, oh, they are they're changing the OS. It would, these proposals, improvement proposals, would come through our governance, just like asking for funds. Um, self driving, you know, uh, anyone can submit, and maybe uh, the GSCs are set aside just to um, shepherd that process and ensure it's followed. Um, resilient. If we have explicit statement on how we work and how that changes, then we can be more adventure, adventurous and experimental and then like, oh, let's do this. And then, OK, it didn't work. Well, roll back. You know, we could do that. Um, measurable. I mean, think about the proposals coming through now where, you know, we know what the current state was prior to the proposal and then we know what's after and then we know what the prediction was and we can actually like begin to model that stuff. And so the thing is, is, you know, this proposal um, is not fundamentally new, is really a crystallization and evolution, evolutionary enhancement on what was already uh, working. So what's the current state of the, um, of the Constitution deliverable? Uh, there is a repository under the Bankless DAO uh, uh, GitHub org. You can see it here. Um, there's the there's the repo. Um, there's a bunch of resources in there. Like this is what we drew from. These are other people talking and thinking about like Dow constitutions. Few call outs of challenges we had. We had some real challenges on engagement. When you talk about money, everyone's real interested. But when you talk about we make decisions, it was like, I mean, it's kind of pulling teeth to get people like involved, you know? Um, and then also the engagement became an issue with the GSCs themselves, where obviously they became GSCs because they were like, you know, deep thinkers with opinions and experience. Well, you know, it was funded like very low, especially after the bank token dropped from, you know, 16 cents to one cent or whatever. So now you have people that are getting pulled in all these like highly compensated positions. Um, and you know, uh, th th this started to like fall down in the priority. Also, surprisingly, um, <laughs> not surprisingly, maybe there wasn't a lot of agreement even with the documents on exactly how things worked. This was like a real, you know, reaching under the bed and getting hit with the uh, with the mousetrap, right? People were like, "Hey, I think the quorum is this, and I think it's that." And you go back and dig around, and you're like, "Wow, there is a." There's a discrepancy here, right? And so um, for anyone who said, why even spend the time building a baseline? I mean, you could have just done a 2.0 right out the gate. My response to that is like, if we had a hard time and it was not easy getting agreement on the current state, it was going to be impossible to get a 2.0 statement. And so so there's that. The current state of this of the constitution, the this um this um V1 of the constitution met with overwhelming uh, uh, approval, and then it kind of like died on the vine after the forum for going on two months now, and so 
when inquiring like what's going on this should have been a snapshot two months ago it's like well it's just kind of like so and so was on vacation or this other thing happened it's like we don't have someone who's like their job to, to to like move from point a to point b right um and so so in a way the the difficulty of getting this to snapshot or the delay actually highlights the importance of some of the stuff we'll talk about in 2.0 um uh, another thing here, which is really awesome, I think you guys are going to love, is um, if this was a smart contract, then we wouldn't need to talk about like whether we follow it or not. And you have to follow it. You, know, you click approve and make your submission, and that's the way it works. But it's not. It's something in between a social social contract and a smart contract, right? It's a it's a community working agreement. And so how do you reinforce the working agreement? Everyone can vote and say, yeah, but then if no one does it, then how do you do? And so the idea here was to actually socialize our constitution and community handbook at the onboarding step. And Bankless Academy has come alongside us and, and are helping us set that up right now. It's very cool. Um, and then the last point on this is this is a race against other proposals asking for large amounts of money and the next season. A huge amount of bank is released with the season flip. And also some proposals have come in asking for, you know, over a million bank. And so when you if, if you do believe that there is a problem with the bank uh, tokenomics, and um, you know, a few million bank is further going to be released, uh, and you think, okay, our runway is, you know, so many months or whatever, then you can see, like, you know, there's a there's a kind of a race to to do something different here, in my opinion, right? You can talk to Tokenomics Kill, maybe they have a totally different view. <laughs> so hopping over to Bankless Academy, Bankless Academy is kind of like, you know. I don't know if you guys remember Code Academy. That was awesome. Um, you go in and you like read something. You read a few things and then you take a short quiz and you read some more and you take a further short quiz. And in order to move to the next kind of section, you need to learn the stuff, right? Well, the idea here is um, we took a summary extrapolation from, you know, summary statement of our uh, constitution community handbook and have converted it into an academy course. And the idea is to join forces with onboarding and make our onboarding a little more rigorous where someone actually has to pass the course in order to, you know, uh, you know, if they pass the course, they get the SBT, soul bound token, non-transferable token, and then they're able to like further step on down the line now this isn't to like ram people's down people's throats like quorum or this and that but it, it is a way to do a service to our members so that they come in and they understand these are the working units here's how decisions get made and if when uh, when a new version of the handbook ca comes out like a uh, proven proposal comes through reaches quorum it creates a canonical change at the git level of the constitution um and that creates an update here and now people are onboarding uh, under that that v2 or maybe even current people have to go back and take the v2 to stay stay up to date or something like that right so these are some designs for um the actual book that'll be put out and book you know it's uh, 12 pages right as it should be long enough to tell you but not so long that no one reads it and then um you know the idea for bankless academy is this is awesome too um our uh this lesson wasn't just put at the same level as other Bankless Academy stuff. It's not like, here's Wallet Basics, here's the Bankless Bankless DAO Constitution, right? We're actually given our own kind of subdomain on for specific to Bankless DAO stuff, which is a pattern that I believe is awesome, and I think every guild should be producing its educational material. Um, uh in the form of these like learning modules right so this is an opportunity for us to dog food our own services um we partnered with mint kudos to help with the sbt issuance and they're amazing um this could be season sp specific and like i said linked to onboarding and i'm not going to do the the step by step right here on where we are but if you see this art and see this content it is a thing of pure beauty and i still have confidence and hope that other DAOs will begin to adopt this type of pattern. And as you can see, as you can see, there's a real progression here, right? Because in the early stages, you need to change fast 
and there's fewer people, you don't need as much overhead for uh, coordination, right? But then as you get more refined, you're able to make more parameters of your operating system more static and only change like tweak certain ones. And that would be like here, the middle uh, on your way to smart contract, right? And then as you get to full maturity, maybe certain operational units of your DAO are the fullest maturity where only maybe one parameter changes under governance. Like I think of like uh, maker DAO, like uh, interest rate or something, right? And so um, this is playing off that Chase Chapman, uh, was it trustware, the social software, that whole like where we fall on that spectrum, okay? So incoming, coming soon. This is a beautiful thing. So there's a few little sneak peeks here. Okay, I'm talking fast because I want to give you guys everything. Any uh, questions or comments before we look at 2.0? So I had a question uh, primarily in regards to like our goal as a DAO. Um, and so, yes, I do understand that we're trying to onboard a billion people into the space to help them go bankless. But when it comes to like governance and collective decision making, there's a misalignment as to whether we how to make informed decisions that is best for the DAO and its sustainability or how to make informed decisions that maybe align more with the social vibes aspect of things. Right. So then my question is, is that have you re-examined a way for us to communicate value and sustainability in the areas of governance so that when we do go to forum, the proposals that we see are somewhat aligned? Because um, at the moment, it's a mixed bag and overwhelming but, for people to vote on. <laughs> yep. Fiends, I tell you what, that's a great question. And I promise I did not pay Fiends to ask for this because this is literally the springboard into 2.0. <laughs> okay. Here's the trick, and I, I hope you guys love this because this is this is wild. When the GSEs kicked off in their mission to examine, the original idea was to say, okay, let's go back. What is the BDAO? What's the bankless mission vision values? Let's look at what we're doing. Let's boil it down to the most promising, you know, risk framework, you know, all that. And then let's like put this to the community for the community to say, okay, yeah, let's do this. So it's basically like, here's the decision space of all things we could do. Let's reduce the decision space to things that are most promising, low risk, and then alignment on mission vision values. The funny part about that is um, it sounds good, but by the end of the term, I felt convinced that it was uh, probably impossible and maybe even not the best thing. Because I found myself saying like, okay, let's say someone has a some kind of new tool, some new governance tool or something, and they've built it already and the potential is so high. And they say, hey, BDAO, all we need is five bucks to take it across the finish line. We're like, oh, it actually doesn't technically fall within our purview here. And then we turn it down. Or there's somebody else that comes and they have this project or something, and it's totally online with our vision. But the leadership is not convincing that they can do it, and we're not sure. So if we're thinking in terms of a traditional company, it's a little difficult because a traditional company, they have a wheelhouse and they need to stay in it for the sake of resources and what. Until recently, and this is where things are changing so fast and so strangely that even businesses are unable to come to grips with this change. And this is the ultimate moment where DAOs can leapfrog traditional organizations. So I uh, present to you 2.0. So 2.0 um, is, is, is partly drawn from an organization called the Hare Corporation. Um, basically what they've done is they're a Chinese appliance manufacturer that have exploded, you know, multi-billion dollar companies. So much so they've come to the United States and like, they're like sucking up a GE, they're taking over. And the strange, they've introduced their own kind of business development model. And I'm telling you, if you took out the words and you read it, you'd be like, oh, this is a mirror article about DAOs. And the nature of that model is here. That's this Ren Dan Hai, and basically the idea is that it's it is a it is a launch platform. That's what it is. Um, it's a real culmination and the natural step into like 
agile networks, like a platform that enables streamlined launch of any promising, profitable startup that has creates a direct connection between the customers and that startup. If that startup fails to deliver or doesn't succeed or its customers, then it ceases to exist. If something else unforeseen uh, entity comes along, then it can launch on this platform and it's attracted to this platform because this platform has made it easy for it to launch. Um, I, I put this in here, this uh, Bankless DAO mirror article, Efficient DAO Design, because this was my first kind of drop down the first uh, the first uh, trap door into into exposure to the hair uh, corporation okay um now now uh, at the same time that this happened at the culmination of the gse term we produced a list of like a top 10. our top 10 list was actually 12 but top 10 is easy to remember. We had a top 10 list of recommendations and we're in the process right now of posting all those recommendations in a forum post to say, okay, what do people think? I fear though that people may take those top 10 recommendations and say, see them as kind of an unrelated disparate, oh, could do this, could do that. When really, if, if you kind of see the thread, they all connect to create, um, a launch platform environment which leans into what bankless DAO is is like dang good at so good at that it's actually caused some problems with us because we fund products projects services and they're so successful and they go on they're making a bunch of money and getting attention and all and then we're back here and we're like ah well, what about our treasury, you know? And so we can either like try to strong arm and try to say, hey, we need X percent back. And how do we get that? How do we ensure that? Or do we press into the, the network of the value and actually use their success as promotion to people outside the network and say, listen, look at these success stories. People came in and started this. Now they're killing it. This group came in and oh, they already got VC funding. They're, all, they're you know, uh, six months in less than six months in and they got like 400 kvc coming in and they're getting deals and all this right like this this network is of extreme value like do we use that okay so i'm gonna touch on not all 10 but i'm gonna touch on a few and paint a picture all right um first up is dow membership right now we have unlimited guest passes that means a person can come into the server get a guest pass and renew it forever there's a problem with this our economy rests upon the idea that a person will lock up 35k bank from circulating supply and somehow stabilize um, if we're paying out bank and there is no lockup then we're on a trajectory for destruction um, Two, introduce a season pass right now it, you just have to hold 35k to okay i'm a member um, the recommendation here is to introduce a cadence season over season to say hey there is a season pass for bankless DAO, I got the pass. We could do it by auction. We could do a flat rate. But the idea is if the network has value, then the free market should evaluate that value. Um, it, it, it makes sense if we say, hey, you can come in and launch a project and get funding and do all this. There should be a cost associated with that. There actually kind of has to be in order for it to be sustainable, right? A lot of pushback against this one, but I'll contend it's, it's absolutely necessary. Um, DAO reputation, as you noticed earlier, um, DAO reputation is, you know, based on you hold 35K bank, someone recommends you, and then you hold more. We only have one of our levels associated with endorsement. And our recommendation is that every reputation level in the DAO should be associated with reputation. So a skill-based leveling. All right. And then on top of that, we would uh, encourage, recommend that there be graduated bank holding requirements for those levels. And so if you're a L3, you had to get that via recommendation and you have to at least hold 100K bank. So between the season pass, right, where now we're adding non bank into a treasury, and in order to graduate up the leveling, you need to hold more bank, we're creating incentive alignment. Um, uh, back pressure on uh, productivity um and and um you know helping our hope and helping our token mechanics dow funding um funding should be based on reputation and so someone shouldn't be able to come to the dow get a guest pass or authenticate as an l1 because they hold 35k bank write a proposal asking for a million bank 
Right now they can. Um, and it, we struggle with what are the perks for the different levels of reputation. We could have that right in here like this. And we help because we create more signal to noise uh, when, when people are asking for money. We can look at the reputation. Um, you know, we can say, well, every project champion needs to be an L3, and we streamline the process of kind of making that perk available to them. Two, we move to customer-centric funding. Right now, the treasury is the customer to everyone. And the problem is, is the treasury doesn't have the capacity, one, to pay for everything, and then to evaluate on that delivery. We have to move to the customer is the one paying for it. That's the free market signal. And the customer will evaluate. Gitcoin is an amazing um, uh, tool to do this because let's say I'm an L3, I have a project, I post a proposal, grants committee or whoever says, yes, this is worthy. They create a matching round in Gitcoin that only compensates if, pe if the public already feels that what I'm presenting is compelling. You see, they amplify uh, uh, the customer. They don't uh, eliminate them. Okay. If no one's interested, I don't get anything. If there's tremendous interest, then there's a, a cohesion between the endorsement and the perks of the DAO and, and what the, what the, what the customer, right. Um, and then also like a funding roadmap right now we do everything as grants. The problem with this is a grant by definition gets nothing in return. And um, what that looks like is I've personally funded projects season over season as a person who had to make the decision. And then they hit kind of pay dirt and went on and got VC and he made all this money and the Dow, you know, struggled with, well, what about R? It's like, it's like you fund an R and D and they discover flying cars and you're like, oh, okay, cool. Have fun. Right. The idea that the first round of funding is a grant and then upon successful completion, further funding would be based upon a venture agreement where X percent comes back or something like that. I think that would be more alignment and more equitable to the to the value of the network. Right. Um, explicit definition of org units. Um, you know, you'll see that, that that previous diagram I showed, there's, there's kind of a conflation between projects and guilds and then there's projects underneath. And then there's like organizational units that are not designed for like education or projects, but they're designed to like keep the lights on and run things. These are all conflated, right? Um, and by having them conflated, we're unable to value the performance of, a, of an actual thing. Uh, uh, how is it doing? Okay. If a guild is focused on a big pro a project underneath, then how can it be doing effective onboarding? Okay. Um, and so this would be a proposed uh, starting point for organizational units and what they should be guilds, um, uh, projects, operations, grants, and then GSC. And um, GSC is not a permanent body right now. So. Um, and then I'm, I'm a huge fan of Conway, Conway's law. Conway's law basically says, you know, you can only deliver something that mirrors your organizational structure. So if you're, if you want to deliver a thing that looks like a certain way, then reverse engineer is called the inverse Conway maneuver. Organize your organizational units in a way that plays to the strengths of Conway's law. And so they, I go a little bit deeper in that efficient uh, DAO design, if, if anyone's interested in checking that out. Um, next up, BDAO 2.0 tokenomics. Here's the thing, um, you know, Web3 and crypto can like criticize the Fed for like printing money, okay? Um, but DAOs are probably doing it even worse. Um, at least the Fed can reduce circulating supply with a tax and interest rate. So they can kind of like, they have a button to turn to, to make changes. A DAO that's issuing its token with no mechanism for reducing circulating supply, no burn, no lockup, and the only lockup being like 35K bank, which everyone can skip because they get a guest pass, we're done for, okay? With the recommendations I just described, we would have um, two things. One is we could introduce a buyback, a buyback based upon season pass. It'd be real simple. If the community is worth something, people will buy a season pass. A percentage of that season pass could go to buy back bank token. Another percentage could go to operations. 
Um, and then the other percentage, maybe 10, 10, 80, 80% 80 goes towards the entity that raised the funds. And so once again, the customer is centric. The customer says, I really want to learn Web3 PM. I'm going to buy season pass to the PM guild. 10% goes to buyback, 10% goes to operations that keep the whole platform running. And the guild is has a vested interest to put themselves out there as crack shot Web3 operators in order to get that 80%. And what's leveraged is the BDAO brand, its greatest strength in order to bring attention to this in our Twitter of like 50,000, whatever, right? Along with a graduated holding for levels, we have a leveling system that again is reducing that, right? The DAO needs a social EIP 1559. We need to sync. Here is an imagery of a before and after. Um, you saw on the left here, you see a before. Um, you know, all this mashup over here, we have a whole system, okay? You have, um, um, uh, let's see here, do, 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 do. the community funds, you know, projects and guilds. They either, I want to come in and learn the thing from the guild, or this, this project looks real promising. I'm going to fund it on Gitcoin. That puts money into the treasury. A percentage of that treasury goes to bank buyback. A percentage comes up to the fixed cost, which is operations. And then the rest goes into the funded units, which, you know, it, it creates incentive alignment. Everyone wants to do the right thing and they have to in order to get paid. And it creates a flywheel that 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 begins to save our, uh, uh, our, our token. So um, that's what I have here if you want to talk more about this uh you can reach me at these places and so um that was a lot but any questions or comments perfect Th thank you justice it was a great presentation uh i think we uh learned a lot uh what are the next steps for bankless DAO. so anyone if you have question please raise your hand and i will go by the order of hand raised sean uh you first. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm I'm curious how much buyback various like service parts of Bankless DAO uh, give, like uh, Bankless Consulting, the the Writers Guild stuff that um, that outsources to other groups. Like what uh, um, what sort of in stream do we have right now from sort of our our externally facing projects? You're saying like uh, entities that are part of the network, how much do they pay back to the treasury? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then how much of that really goes into uh, take, taking bank off the market or creating buy pressure for a bank? Uh, to, my, to, my, uh, to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any buyback at all. Um, and any, um, any money coming back to the treasury, I'm... Uh, to the to the largest the, to the most profitable entities i'm aware of i'm not aware of anything coming back you may see some come back in the form of unspent funds but as far as like we sh give x percent back it is uh to my knowledge negl negligible if not non-existent maybe that's something we should think about but cool thank you raj you go next Yeah, so uh, I, I, I always uh, uh, talk about having a KPI-based governance model, right? So with that, what I mean is that every proposal that goes through the forum or snapshot, right, should have certain KPIs. Like uh, it could be something as similar, as small as having like 5,000 views on this or let's say getting 100 new uh, token holders or, or, or anything that is measurable, that is quantitative, right? So. What happens is, uh, and then there should be a timeline for a certain proposal that this proposal should hit these KPIs within three months to be a success. So with every successful proposal, we can reward the people who actually voted uh, for that uh, particular proposal. And we could probably slash some uh, reputation for the people who voted against it. So this is not to... Uh, promote any toxic behavior or anything, but this is just to promote and this is just to incentivize good behavior of people and to make people more 
I would say accountable of uh, whatever they vote on. So I wanted to know if uh, you feel something like this can actually help DAO ecosystem in general and bankless DAO for that matter. If if you can consider this, like, just wanted your thoughts on that. Yeah. Now I I hear what you're saying, and it seems obvious. Like why you know the DAO funds something, and then they're they're like, are they actually doing the thing they said? And then. You know, but here, here's the crazy part: is um, who follows up on that? Like, think about it. You, you're, you're saying the whole community votes yes on a thing, or that you know, hundreds of people, right? And then who evaluates those KPIs? The funny part is this: is you turn that whole problem inside out. If you say, "Listen, what project are you trying to launch?" launch it as a public like either on gitcoin or like i have to purchase an nft to participate then the customer i have a vested interest if you don't launch then i ain't i ain't buying your thing um and and then i have a vested interest in like actually evaluating this performance maybe the kpis suck and doesn't matter because you still deliver the product right but um it, it's a whole different way of thinking when you know you're trying to evaluate how are they doing where's the money from the very start asking the whole community to vote on whether to fund a projects i i feel it is a giant magnified tragedy of the commons because people vote differently when they're voting with their dollar versus yours and everything exactly. that comes to the everything that comes to snapshot everyone is voting with none of their own money it's different when someone asks for a 50,000 bank or they ask you for ten dollars you're like hey I don't know. I'm not sure about you. I'm not giving you the 10, 50K. Send it. The Dow Vision, we're doing it, Dow in it. You know, yeah, the, the that, dynamic the is. Yeah. I mean, right? That yeah. for every proposal, you, every vote you want to put in, you need to stake some some sort of capital from your end. Like, and if you are, if, if what you're voted is good, you'll be rewarded from the Dow Treasury. And if what you voted is like, let's say, against the con common consensus, then those. Uh, staked amount will be slashed yeah, um, so this is this is basically promoting good behavior and slashing negative behavior yeah uh, so I, eventually i'm sorry i just want to just make note that we only have five minutes oh. um so the discussion can continue on telegram but i wanted to give people an opportunity to ask questions directly to justice um so sean grub go ahead please you're on mute brother uh, you're on mute okay try that again Thanks, guys. So great conversation. Interesting. I I mean, I think everybody is kind of many DAOs are struggling with that same problem of, OK, how are we giving a grant and what value is being returned to the Treasury? And I'm not saying ROI, but I'm saying, how are we account, how are we accounting for money going out, but no money coming in? The thing I want to ask you about, though, is in the creation of the Constitution, it sounds like you just had to wrap your arms around the content that was already existing and you didn't have to create much meaning that there's a ton of stuff out there was it just creating and curating content and um components that already existed or did you have to create a lot to make that constitution happen i would say it was mm, 90 percent plus bringing it together and dealing with any uh conflicts um and then and then getting in, in those conflicts getting enough you know that people were like okay i'm i'm okay with this you know so that makes the comfort the conversation about constitutions a whole lot more relevant for me because when i think of constitution i think oh god this is going to be a heavy heavy lift whereas really what you did was you solved the problem of infinitely recreating the wheel. You went and found the best wheel and just put it in a document and says, here it is, and here's a change control for it. So well done. I, I wouldn't even say found the best wheel. We found our current wheel. <laughs> <laughs> which which Thank is you. a challenge. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So I have a question. Um, not more of a question. Like I think that it's important for when we're designing our governance to also have it align with our community design and so with bankless dao i always reference it because it is like the most detailed documentation even at our fault <laughs> um for, to have access to and so um can you just kind of express how 
whatever we're doing at Bankless DAO is appropriate for Bankless DAO. It might not be appropriate for other DAO communities. And, and I say this because like, you know, we have a strong community of builders. We have a strong communities of self-starters and entrepreneurs. And we like basically are really great at shipping things and effective in regards to that. So the processes that we have, whether it's the documentation or detailed notion or, or a proposal process or the capacity for people to participate, will not might not be appropriate for other other DAOs that don't have the same community, you know, professional capacity, right? And so can you kind of just um, I don't know, talk about how these particular approaches that you're doing are how they are appropriate for Bankless DAO and Bankless DAO's community, but not might not be um appropriate for all DAOs. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll, I'll use a concrete example. So I will say I'm increasingly sold to the hair, uh, like model as as not just a oh for this or that, but as a as as the new network model of orgs, right? Um, but even within that, that can look different as far as uh, permission, per, uh, permissiveness in DAOs and stuff. And here's a good example of like Raid Guild. Uh, raid guild we're not even in the same stratosphere of raid guild as far as shipping complex products right not even the same universe okay but you're not coming into raid guild and like learning and meeting some people and maybe putting out a small project and then a bigger one later that's not happening you're not getting it okay you literally have to be hovering around and delivering some cool stuff for months before you get it. so it's high permission right but that high permission is correlative to their ability to ship like crazy good stuff. And so the the strength for our community is effectively it's like the the springboard into web3. And so if we can if we can uh, incentivize and 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 uh, leverage that value to create value so we're sustainable in the form of a season pass and then also encourage people that once they have something that's promising they can launch on our platform and make it real easy then it's something that presses so hard into our strengths and i think that concludes uh, our session uh for today uh so justice thank you very much for the for the presentation uh i think it was uh really exciting to hear like how bankless down it's evolving and as you said like it's super important platform for all the newcomers to web3 i think we can be a you know great uh platform uh for those folks so so i'm excited to learn more how you are progressing on it also please keep us posted in the telegram group there are many people you know focusing on governance. So if you want some feedback on anything or help with something, I, I hope we are the right group to ask uh, to. And uh, who we have uh, next week, Fims? Next week is Kohei, who will be covering governance at Senate Labs. Perfect, uh, looking forward to that. So thank you everyone and have a great week. Thanks thank everybody, you. appreciate you. Thank you. Can Goodbye. Can we start recording? Okay. I'm trying.